Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to My Financial Focus. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a new options trading strategy that I have not introduced on this channel yet called the Short Iron Butterfly. A Short Iron Butterfly is basically a theta positive strategy, which means we make money as time goes on and as we get closer and closer to expiration date. And it's very similar to the short straddle options trading strategy that I mentioned on this channel previously. But this strategy is a little bit different because our max loss is not unlimited the way it is with the short straddle. And it is also different for a few other reasons that I'll get into in this video. So thanks in advance for leaving a like and let's get right into it. So how do we open a short iron butterfly? Well, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is sell a call option and a put option at the same strike price. And then we're going to buy an out of the money put option and an out of the money call option. And so what that looks like in this particular case is, let's say I wanted to use the $98 strike call and put option. I would just short to the $98 strike call option and then I would short the 98 dollar strike put option and then I would buy an out of the money put so in this case I might decide to buy the put option that has a strike price that is five dollars less than the strike price of the short put so that would be the 93 strike put option and then we actually I'm buying this so I would buy it go long on that put option and then I would go long on a call option. I'll do on the same distance. This time it'll be 98 plus five, so 103. And so I'll basically just go long on a call option that's out of the money, and then also go long on a put option that's out of the money, and then sell the call option and the put option at the same strike price. And we can see from this chart down here, <clears throat> this basically gives us our short iron butterfly. And the way we experience our max profit from this strategy is if the share price on expiration lands exactly on the strike price of the short options, which is obviously pretty highly unlikely because it would have to land exactly on $98 per share in order for us to experience a max profit. And so in this particular case with this strategy, the actual realistic profit that the trader will likely experience is going to be near the max profit, but it probably won't be the actual exact max profit. And so earlier I pointed out that this strategy is pretty similar to the short straddle, and we can see that right here because the short straddle is basically a short iron butterfly with unlimited potential loss. And the reason why that is is because the short straddle does not use a long call option and a long put option. A short straddle is pretty much only made up of a short call and a short put. As we recall from the last video, if anybody watched that, I'll link it in the description below. But basically how it works is it's basically a short iron butterfly, except it does not have the long call and the long put options. And so what that ends up doing is we essentially give ourselves more max profit potential because we're not eating away at the amount of profit we could potentially gain from this total credit by spending money buying a long call and a long put. But that also makes it so that we have unlimited loss potential because we don't have the right to buy shares at the strike price of the call option and we don't have the right to sell shares at the strike price of the put option. So let's say, let me just erase these right here so we can get a better look at it. This is what the short straddle typically looks <clears throat> typically looks like and we can see the max profit potential increased quite a bit because we're not spending money covering our short positions but obviously our max loss is unlimited because theoretically in the example with the call option the share price can theoretically just rise all the way to a million dollars and then in that case we would be forced to sell shares at the strike price of the call option but if we don't already own shares then we'll be buying shares at the current share price in this case in this example one million dollars per share and then we'll be selling them at the strike price of the short call but if we have a long call for example right here with this 103 dollar strike price long call option then we have the right to buy shares at the strike price of this long call option and so even if the share price were to rise to one million dollars per share 
we would still be able to buy shares at $103 per share and then immediately sell them at $98 per share, which means that in this case, our max loss would be the difference between the strike price of the long call and the strike price of the short call, which in this case is $5 and $5 times 100 is $500. So then in this case, our max loss potential would be $500. And so that's basically how this strategy differs from the short straddle. It's basically just a short straddle, but we're not having as much profit because of the premium that we're paying for the long call options to cover our position. But then we also, as a result of that, have protection in that we aren't going to experience a unlimited loss in the event of a really, really big catastrophic share price movement. And so right here, we can see these break even points. And these are pretty easy to calculate for the lower break even point right here of about $93.93, I believe that says. Basically, how that's calculated is we just take the strike price of the short put option minus the total credit received. And so, for example, in the event that the share price on expiration date was trading at $93.93, we would basically buy shares at $98 per share and then immediately sell them at $93.93. And in that case, we would experience a max loss of $9,800 minus $9,393, which is pretty much equal to the total credit that we received for opening up the position. And so because it's equal to the total credit that we received for opening up the position, we would break even because our loss is equal to our total profit. And in the case of the call, it's pretty much the exact same thing. We just take the strike price of the short call option plus the total credit received, and that gives us the higher break even point because the loss we would experience from buying shares at this break even price down here and then selling them at $98 per share would be equal to the total credit that we received for opening up the position. And so, <clears throat> and so in Robinhood, basically when somebody is opening up a position like this, the reason why the short iron butterfly gives someone an advantage as opposed to the short straddle is because on Robinhood, they don't allow traders to actually open up these naked short put and short call positions without having the collateral to be able to cover their position in the event of assignment. And so in the case of the call option, for example, if somebody has a short call position on like a long straddle, for example, then Robinhood would want to make sure that that person already owned shares of the underlying before they made that short call position. And this strategy is also known as a covered call. And basically how it works is somebody would own 100 shares of the underlying, for example, and then only then would they be able to sell a call option against their shares. Because if they are assigned on their short call option, then they could just sell the 100 shares they already had. But on Robinhood, we aren't actually able to open a short call position unless we already have the 100 underlying shares. But when we're using a short iron butterfly, we don't actually need the 100 underlying shares in order to collect premium from opening up a short call position. And the reason why this is, is because of the fact that we have this long call option covering our position. From Robinhood's perspective, because our max loss is limited at in this case, $500 because of the difference between $103 and $98. <clears throat> what that basically means is that all we have to have in order to open up a position like this is enough collateral to cover the potential loss if we were to buy at the long call and sell at the short call. And then similarly, it works just exactly the same way for the put contract. With the put contract, if we're forced to sell shares or not sell shares, if we're forced to buy shares at the strike price of $98 and then sell shares at $93, that's a max loss of $500 on the total position because it's $9,800 minus $9,300. And so as long as we have enough money in our account to cover the loss, then Robinhood will allow us to open this position. We can see in order to open this, it wants us to have a collateral of at least $500. And so that's the real difference between 
the short iron butterfly and the short straddle is that with the short straddle we aren't actually able to take advantage of collecting premium from short calls without already owning the underlying shares but with the short iron butterfly because our max loss is limited all we have to have to show to robin hood for proof that we can cover this position is just the collateral between the long option and the short option spread which in this case is 500 dollars and funny enough we can see here that the credit collected from opening up the short iron butterfly can actually be used to fulfill the collateral requirement so we can see that i only have a hundred dollars of buying power available in my account and so it wouldn't really make sense for me to be able to open a position that's requiring five hundred dollars of collateral but because i'm collecting over $400 in credit for opening up the position, $400 plus $100 is more than $500. And so I'm actually able to profit from opening up this position, even though I don't already have $500 of collateral in my account. So we can actually use the minimum credit that we collect from opening this position to provide proof to Robinhood that we have enough money to open the position. So it's kind of cyclical how that works but it's definitely something that we can take advantage of as options traders. And so a good important question that I think is important to look at to better understand this is what happens if the short option expires in the money, but the long option does not. And this is probably a question that I'll get a lot in the comment section below. And what this is basically asking is, let's say hypothetically speaking, that on expiration date, the share price expired above $98 per share, but it did not expire above $103 per share. So let's say it expired at like $101 per share, which means that the short call option expired in the money, but the long call option expired out of the money. In this particular case, it's pretty easy to understand. All that would happen is we would sell shares at the short strike and then immediately buy the shares back at the current share price. And in this case, the current share price is going to be higher than the short strike. And so we would experience a loss, which in this case would be $101 minus 98, which would be $300. So in this case, we would experience a loss of $300 if the shorts, if the share price exp expired or if the share price was $101 per share on expiration date, which would make the short call in the money, but the long call out of the money. And a pretty similar thing would happen with the put contracts. Basically, if the share price was at like $96 per share on expiration date, then we would buy shares at $98 per share and sell them at $96 per share. And so we would still experience a loss on our position. It just wouldn't be the max loss of $500, given that the share price didn't actually fall below the strike price of our long put. It only fell below the strike price of our short put. And so the final question that I want to cover, which is a pretty complex topic that I've actually already covered before on this channel, is what would happen if on expiration date the short strike expires in the money and then the long strike expires out of the money, but then after hours, the underlying price moves further than the long strike, thus making the trader experience a loss greater than the spread. And so basically what this is asking is if the share price expires or if the share price is in this case with the put contract, if it's below the strike price of the put option and it's above the strike price of the long put option, then what would happen is on expiration date, both of these contracts are going to expire because they're expiring on expiration date, but they would expire once the time runs out on trading hours that day. And so if as traders, we are told to buy shares at the strike price of the short option, typically we would cover our position by then immediately selling these shares at the strike price of our long put option. But it's possible that the share price would be like around $96, right? and we would buy shares at $98 per share and expect to sell them later at $93 per share. But then the long put option expires, and so we no longer have that protection. And then after hours, when we aren't able to trade anymore, the share price moves from $96 per share to $0 per share. And so now we're left with a position where we thought that we were protected 
up to a loss, a max loss of $500. But in actuality, because the share price moved so much after hours, after it was out of our control, we actually ended up experiencing a greater loss than $500. And because our long put option expired worthless, we no longer have that as a right to sell our shares at that strike price. And so this is a pretty rare event, but it has happened in the past to other traders. And I've already made a video about this on my channel that goes into detail called the danger of spreads, which I'll link in the description. But basically to sum up, if this does happen, then the trader would be held liable for the losses and they could potentially end up in debt to Robinhood. And so to avoid this from happening, it's probably best just to close the whole position before expiration date. And the easiest way to do that is just to buy back the short options and then sell the long option. So basically just do the opposite transaction that someone did when they opened up this position. So in this case, we can see that we went short on the 98 call and the 98 put, and then we went long on the 103 call and long on the 93 put. So all we would do is we would sell the 93 put, sell the 103 call, and then we would buy back the $98 put and the $98 call, and that would close the entire position. And that's how we could close it before expiration date to prevent something like this happening, or also just to close the position if we end up profitable, say on like March, 15th or something like that and we just want to close the position early that would be how we could go about doing that and that basically sums up everything to do with the short iron butterfly strategy it's a pretty interesting strategy and it definitely offers a trader a lot of opportunity to profit in different ways let me know in the comment section below if this video provided any value or if anyone has any questions leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and i'll see everyone in the next one